When we wake up in the morning and have had a dream during the night, we just say, it was all a dream, and carry on with our daily lives. But have you ever wondered what the difference is between the real world and a dream? Is it that we are able to perceive what we refer to as the real world by means of our senses? But how would we prove reality if we one day lost all our senses? These questions, nearly as old as mankind itself, have been the subject of much scientific inquiry. The interesting thing is that the subject has recently been the subject of several box office record-breaking films. These films have attracted so much attention that the debates over them continue, even though they are no longer on general release. In this film, we shall be evaluating facts about the true nature of matter by examining a few of the films in question. We shall see how the world we imagine to be real is actually a collection of illusions experienced in our minds. to be somewhere very different to where they actually are. For example, stereo images are reflected off all the walls and floor of this room. People wandering around this room with stereo glasses imagine themselves to be somewhere very different. They can even react to the things they see and hear as if these were real. The truth is that there is no need for an outside world in order for us to imagine ourselves to be somewhere very different, because everything we imagine we experience actually takes place in our minds. We can therefore never make direct contact with the original of matter. In other words, everything we perceive and are sure exists throughout our lives is actually images and feelings forming in the brain. Another film to examine the relationship between the real and virtual worlds is Vanilla Sky. David Ames runs a large publishing business. The people in his environment admire his physical appearance, financial status and social circle. until his face is ruined in a traffic accident. <laughs> David Ames then signs a contract with a company. Under the agreement, the company will enable him to have a lucid dream. Meanwhile, his body will be kept in a special location. David Ames thus goes on living in a virtual world. He touches the objects around him in the virtual world, eats, laughs and enjoys himself as if these were all real. In one scene, the lead character, David, is speaking with a doctor who asks whether he can distinguish between illusion and reality. David is at first certain that he can. Yet as he strives to recall events in his memory, he eventually becomes uncertain and says that he cannot tell the difference. Interestingly, while he is saying all this, he is actually living in an illusory world being shown to him. Who is the man 
in the restaurant. Who is it? I can't. Can you tell the difference between dreams and reality? Of course, can you? Think about it. Think with your head. You signed a contract, did you not? I signed something. Was the man in the restaurant there? <sighs> Accept your body's resistance. Let your head answer. Yes. That's right. Who is Ellie? I'm... David, living within artificially induced dreams, genuinely believes in the reality of his past experiences. The same is true for many people's present lives. No matter how adamant people are that the images, voices, or feelings they interact with are real, these are only copies existing in the mind. In other words, imaginary copies of things they can never actually reach. Our own situation is very like that of the character in the film. Everything in the world we live in is under the control of God. And every tiny detail has been created as part of a test. Someone who knows that throughout his life, God creates all the events he sees, all the sounds he hears as images in his brain, will submit to God, the creator of us all, the infinitely compassionate and merciful, rather than falling victim to fear, empty despair, and panic. In one verse, God reveals, If God helps you, no one can vanquish you. If he forsakes you, who can help you after that? So the believers should put their trust in God. Another film on this subject is The Thirteenth Floor, Los Angeles, 1999, The Thirteenth Floor of a Business Block. Hannon Fuller and his colleague Douglas Hayes points out that virtual environments recreate reality so realistically that people can be fooled by these illusionary images. Mountains, plains, flowers, people, seas, briefly everything we see and everything that God... Those who do not see this fact in this world will experience intense regret in the hereafter. They will voice their regret when they realize that everything they devoted themselves to during their lives, all the things they chased after in the belief they were real, the people, goods, rank and titles they regarded as equal to God in forgetfulness of Him and the hereafter were in fact illusions and images in their minds. They will suffer intense sorrow as they see how the things they thought would last forever disappear one by one. God reveals the confessions of these people in the hereafter in the Quran. Then they will be asked, Where are those besides God you associated with Him? And they will reply, They have forsaken us. Or rather, we were not calling to anything at all before. That is how God misguides the disbelievers. It is of the utmost importance to understand correctly the secret beyond matter explained throughout this film. Mountains, plains, flowers, people, seas, briefly everything we see, and everything that God informs us in the Quran that He created out of nothing, is created, and does indeed exist. To say that matter is an illusion does not mean that matter does not exist. On the contrary, whether we see it or not, there is a material world. But what we see is a copy of that world, interpreted by our perceptions in our brains. 
Matter is therefore an illusion for us. What difference will arriving at this truth make to a person? The lives, perspectives and values of those who realize that we only experience a copy of matter will all change. A person who becomes aware of this will understand that God pervades all places and that everything takes place by His leave and at His command. His closeness to and fear of God will increase and consequently he will strictly observe the limits set by God. Everyone who knows that God sees and hears him at all moments and who understands that he will have to account for his every deed in the hereafter will naturally possess the finest moral values. Thus everyone in society will treat everyone else with love and respect and people will compete to behave well. It is clear that matter is an illusion. The only absolute being is Almighty God who created matter out of nothing. God reveals in the Quran that God, there is no deity but Him, the living, the self-sustaining. He is not subject to drowsiness or sleep. Everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to Him. Who can intercede with Him except by His permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, but they cannot grasp any of His knowledge save what He wills. His footstool encompasses the heavens and the earth, and their preservation do not tire Him. He is the Most High, the Magnificent. God bears witness that there is no deity but Him, as do the angels and the people of knowledge upholding justice. There is no deity but Him, the Almighty, the All-Wise. The 21st century is a turning point in history in which this reality will spread among all peoples and materialism will be wiped from the face of the earth. Some, under the influence of the materialist philosophy, who believed that matter is absolute, now have come to realize that they themselves are illusions, that the only absolute being is God, whose being encompasses all there is. This reality is revealed in the verses. What is in the heavens and in the earth belongs to God. God encompasses all things. Yet those who disbelieve insist on their denial while God is encircling them from behind. What? Are they in doubt about the meeting with their Lord? What? Does he not encompass all things? <laughs> 